What's up guys, Froggy here, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I make Hot Wheels cars drive on their own. So the first thing I did was I had to create a scene for them to drive through, or I'm gonna call it my set. Now originally I was gonna do this on the floor just so I could have a very long stretch of runway for the car to drive on, but the floor was really gonna limit how much movement I could do with the camera. So because of this, I decided I was gonna set up my scene on my desk. So to set up my scene, I got a few pieces of Bristol board from the dollar store. I only needed about three to make it work for this desk right here. I used two Bristol boards for the background and then one cut in half just to make the floor. Then I bought some paint from the dollar store and painted my background. I wanted to keep it super simple, so I just did this Windows XP type background with green hills, a blue sky, and some white clouds. So once I finished painting everything and set it up, it looked like this. Now it's time to start making it look a little more realistic. Now luckily I was able to find this play tape which is like this tape that has a print of a road on it. It almost looks like it was meant for Hot Wheels because when you put a Hot Wheels on it, it literally looks like it's the exact same scale that it should be. So because of this tape, I didn't actually have to paint a road on my Bristol board. Now already, just by adding that, this scene looks pretty legit and you can probably start filming on this but I'm gonna take it a step further. Now I found these trees at my local arts and crafts store and uh, no, this is not marijuana. Ah, arts and craft trees. So I found these trees and I figured, you know what? That would look really good with a Hot Wheels car right there. It literally looks like it's about the same size that you would imagine a tree to be right next to a Hot Wheels car. So I got myself six of these trees because that's kind of all the space that I have for on my three and a half foot runway right here. So I set up the trees and already it looks a lot better than it did with just the road. And now I wanna add one more element to this which is some type of bushes or something to make it look a little bit more real with the trees. So I picked up some moss to make fake bushes. Uh, that ain't that good stuff. I scattered the moss throughout the scene and between the trees to fill up the blank space. And I also tried to use it to cover up that harsh edge between the ground and the background so it isn't so obvious on camera. And now finally, our set is complete. Now it's time to light the scene. So for this, I just used these two newer LED lights I have, and I put a white plastic bag over them to diffuse the light so it's not so harsh. I also had one more light above my desk that I angled downwards to give me another layer of light. And it almost acted like the sun because it was so much harsher than the other two lights. A lot of people were wondering how I actually got the Hot Wheels to move throughout the scene. People were taking guesses that it was magnets, that maybe there was a string attached to the car, that I was pulling it and then I rotoscoped the string out, or that I even put like a little motor on the cars. And honestly guys, you're all overcomplicating it. It's actually way easier than you think. So here's how I did it. I picked up these two pieces of track, put it together, and this right here became my little launch ramp. So I set up a smaller table beside the desk that I had my set on, and I had to stack books to an appropriate height to which I was going to lay the track on and have the car launch into the scene from. Now you wanna get the speed right, so you had to do little micro adjustments with how many books you're putting on just so when the car actually goes down the ramp and into the scene, the speed is pretty consistent. You don't want it too fast and you don't want it too slow. I also had to make this little ramp coming off the end of the track just so when the Hot Wheels actually comes off it, it's nice and smooth because if you don't have that, the other end is a little bit elevated so the Hot Wheels kind of like bounces onto the ground and goes like every every which way. So had to make this just so the Hot Wheels rides off of it really smoothly. So now that everything is set up, it's time to start filming. So here's the biggest thing that I had to figure out to make this thing look as good as it looks. Now, I use a really big camera for my work. I have this 5D right here, which is a full frame camera. I also have this APS-C camera with a macro lens on it. This is kind of what you would figure that I'm gonna use, right? Like a nice big camera with a macro lens on it. Nah, dog, that's, that's not gonna work for this. See, these cameras, this camera and the 5D that I'm filming this on, the sensor in these cameras is just way too big to film something as small as a little Hot Wheels. I mean, look at it. This thing can literally almost just fit inside the lens right there. Like these, these cameras are meant to film like 
big life-size objects, not little tiny things, right? You just get way too much bokeh when it comes to shooting an object this small, and there's just so much that's out of focus, it's not really pleasing to look at. So the camera I used to film this with is, drum roll please, the G7X Mark II. Now this camera has a one inch sensor compared to the bigger sensors found in DSLRs. The camera that I'm shooting this on right now is a full frame sensor which is about that big. Uh, these things aren't to scale by the way. Full frame sensor would be about that big, APS-C would be about that big, then the G7X is one inch which is that small. So that's just kind of to show you how it compares to a full frame sensor like this camera. I also included one more sensor here, uh, I'm not sure what the name of these kind of sensors is. They're smaller than one inch. They're the type of sensors that you would find in your cell phone. And honestly, I would say you can use either a one inch sensor or your cell phone to actually make Hot Wheels look really good. Just to show you guys how the different sensors affect the image of a Hot Wheels, here's a comparison of all four sensors and how they look when shooting a Hot Wheels up close. Notice how blurry and out of focus the two bigger sensor cameras are because they are really meant to shoot life-size objects instead of tiny little Hot Wheels. But the smaller sensor camera are a lot more pleasing to look at because there isn't so much bokeh and so much blurriness going on. A big reason I like the G7X is because it has an insane image stabilizer built into it. I think it's a very underrated feature of this camera. Not enough people talk about how good the image stabilizer is, but it's really good and it really helps with getting these shots. So now that we've established what kind of camera you need, which is a one inch sensor camera or smaller, your phone, how do we actually film the moving car? So to film the Hot Wheels, what we have to do is set up your frame, make sure Sure to focus on the car, lock in the focus by switching to manual focus, put the car on your launch track, and when you release the car, follow it as best as you can with the camera. That's it. No magnets, no strings, and certainly no motors. This is all handheld by the way, there's no warp stabilizer going on or anything like that. Now there's one major key to make this thing look a little more realistic. Now because the car is so small, it moves incredibly fast throughout the scene. So because of this, what we want to do is shoot in slow motion. Now the G7X can shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second, which is why it makes it an ideal candidate for this type of filming. So everything was shot at 60 frames per second and slowed down in post. That entire video you guys saw was actually playing back in slow motion. That's why it was so hard to put your finger on why it looked so realistic. The car is clearly moving too slow to have that much momentum and velocity, which is why I understand why some people would think it's moving on a magnet under the table. When you play back the clips in normal speed, it kind of looks like this which just looks way too fast. That's why you gotta shoot this in slow motion. Now, because I only have about three and a half feet of runway on this desk, what I would do is change up the placement of the trees and move the moss around a little bit for every single angle that I would get, just so it looks like it's an endless continuation of the road when really it's the exact same three feet that you saw before. In a way, you get to play God while you're doing this because you're in complete control of this little world that you created. It's like being a kid, but with the knowledge and skills of an adult. If you're wondering why I don't have a girlfriend, well now you know. Alright, thank you guys for watching this behind the scenes of how I play with my Hot Wheels. Please smash that thumbs up button if you made it this far into the video because it did take me a long time to make both this behind the scenes and the actual video. And please consider subscribing. I'm trying to hit 10k before the end of the year just to start 2020 off on the right foot, you know? Jeez, I can't believe we're about to hit 2020. Holy shit, we're really in the future. I think Elon Musk knows what he was doing with that Cybertruck, you know what I'm saying? Alright, peace guys.